Hi, my name is Art Fuel, and I'm a systems engineer with the Networking and Security Business Unit at VMware. Today I'll be walking you through an installation of the vRealize Network Insight 3.3 platform for the purpose of conducting a pre-assessment. Now this is a basic pre-assessment installation, so if you're doing a complex or long-lived installation, please work with your VMware account team and VMware Pref professional services for planning, as there are many considerations for those other type of installations that we will not cover in this video. So prior to uh, watching this video, I hope you understand already what vRealize Network Insights is. We're not going to cover uh, any explanations, and we're just strictly going to walk through the installation. Now, uh, on the screen, you should see these prerequisites. Feel free to pause it here to make sure you meet all the prerequisites and, under, and you're prepared for them. Um, also, please review the full vRealize uh, documentation prior to proceeding with installation. And one additional note, uh, for this video, I will refer to vRealize Network Insights by its nickname of Verni. So, Verni equals vRealize Network Insights. I'm going to go ahead and open up my remote desktop connection in my lab environment. And I have a specific host that I've prepared for this, but you can use the same wizard at your data center level, uh, at your cluster level to allow DRS to, uh, to find the optimal workload placement. In this case, I'm going to right click on ESX05 here in my lab environment, and we're going to go ahead and do the deploy OVF template. And I have saved these files locally on the hard drive. You know, that's important. Many vCenter administrators will access the web client or the full client from a desktop that they, they only have access to go through port 80 or port 443. So you need to make sure when you run this wizard, it has to be from a host that can has the, uh, the, the network connectivity allowed for these file transfers. So I have a local file here. Let me navigate to it. And as you can see, the, these uh, have very long file names. So the first one you want to install is the platform OVA. Keep in mind the platform has to be installed, fully installed, and initialized prior to installing the proxy OVA. So we'll go ahead and click Open here and click Next. It's, so we'll click Accept to the license agreement and click Next. I'll pick a destination folder for it to locate the virtual machine. And I'm also going to specify the name of the virtual appliance that we're deploying. I'll leave the default. And the default of medium configuration is appropriate for most installations. I'll go ahead and select a virtual disk format and a storage target. Then select the uh, distributed switch and port group. And then finally, now we'll need to customize the template with the IP address, netmask, gateway, uh, DNS server, NTP server of uh, the appliance when it's deployed. So I'm going to pause the video and enter those values. Okay, I've entered my IP address values. So we'll go ahead and click next. And I'm going to select this box. This is power on after deployment. And click finish. Now, uh, what's going to happen now is the virtual plans file, who it is located on the desktop of this virtual machine, is uploading into the vCenter data store. And so this will take a few minutes to upload. And you can monitor the progress here in the recent tasks pane. I'm going to pause the video. And I will resume once we've uploaded. Okay, we're back, and you can see here that my v Verni uh, platform OVA virtual machine is uh, up and running. Our next step, we're going to open the web uh, prompt to the interface of the vRealize Network Insight platform. But again, if this comes up and saying it's not ready yet or blank, make sure you give it a few minutes after the virtual machine powers on before you uh, before you load this window. So we'll enter the IP address. Well, there we are of the Verni appliance, the platform OVA. And the first thing it's going to ask us for is a license key. So please work, make sure you work with your VMware account team to get your license key. 
And the other thing is for this video, since we're focusing on the pre-assessment, and please ensure that you have a evaluation license key. If you have a standard full production license key, it will not load into the evaluation mode, which is the focus of this video. So that looks right. So let's validate our key. And we can see here that we have a valid license key, and it's valid through, uh, in, in this case, April. Uh, and we can go ahead and click Activate. And once we've activated, it brings us to a screen uh, where we can see here, Set Up Proxy Virtual Appliance. So before we can actually uh, set up the virtual appliance, we need to generate this shared secret. So I'm going to click Generate here, and this will take just a second to run or a minute to run. And now we have our shared secret generated here. You can copy it now and uh, leave this browser window open and return back to your vSphere web client. We're going to go ahead and, and now we're going to install the proxy OVA. So I'm going to <coughs> right click on my ESX 06A host here and we'll do deploy OVF template wizard local file and this time we're going to browse to our proxy OVA file next we'll review the details and click next accept license agreement next I'm going to leave the default name and just click on my data center or you can specify a folder the default of medium, again appropriate for most installations. We'll select our virtual, your preferred virtual disk format uh, and uh, the storage target. And we'll go ahead and select our uh, the correct port group. Now the port group again. The main thing is is that you need IP connectivity uh, between uh, the management network and the proxy in the platform OVA, and it's recommended, especially for the pre-assessment. I recommend to put the proxy and platform on the same subnet. It makes it a little easier, uh, but that is not a requirement. And you can see here now it's asking for that shared secret that we copied from. Um, from the platform OVA screen earlier. So we'll go ahead and paste that in here. And we'll expand the networking properties. And uh, we can see it's asking for, again, the standard IP addressing information. I'm going to pause the video while I type in my values. OK, now I've entered the shared secret. And I have entered all my IP information. And I'll go ahead and click Next. And then finally, we can review those uh, details, make sure we got everything correct. Click the power on after deployment click finish. Once again, this is going to transfer the uh, virtual appliance file from the hard drive of this machine to the vCenter data store, and that will take a few minutes. You can monitor the progress here in the recent tasks pane, and I'm going to pause the video, and I'll resume shortly. Okay, now we can see that our proxy has been detected, so I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And now we can go ahead and log in with the uh, default username and password of admin at local and the password is admin. Okay, you can see this uh, message. If you have, have entered an evaluation license key, you'll launch an evaluation mode as I have, and you get this little message that said you're in assessment mode. So I'll click OK. And this is what our home screen looks like. And we'll go ahead and click and add data source. And we're going to add our vCenter information in here. And we go here in the upper right and click add new source. We'll select vCenter. <clears throat> I'm going to type this in and I'm going to pause the video while I'm doing that. And you can see once that has validated, it it uh, ungrays this uh, enable net NetFlow IP fix on this vCenter. And this is critical. This is where the tool is going to gather you know, pretty much all the data that it uses. So ensure that this is checked. And you can see here that we it shows us the VDS, uh, VMware Distributed Switches, in our environment. And uh, we can select the entire distributed switches. Or if we'd like, we can hit this caret to expand the section. And we can, if we'd like, we can select 
uh, by individual port group. Or in this case, I'm going to go ahead and enable everything. And we'll give it a nickname. Doesn't matter what you call this. And I don't have any notes, so I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. And we can see here back on the Data Sources uh, tab in the Settings that we can see our vCenter and it's turned on to collect data. Now, at this point, we can go ahead up here in the upper left-hand corner and click on the logo to go back to the home page. Now, uh, Verney will have to collect data for at least two hours before you run the Analyze. But it's recommended that you run it for a period of a few days so uh, before running the analysis. And so uh, work with your VMware account team to determine the optimal length of analysis for your environment. And uh, whatever that duration is, return back to this window when you're ready to run the analysis. And then you, you'll select your environment here. Typically all, but you can actually filter down. right? And then you'll click the Analyze button, and that will generate a report for you. And that is uh, all the end of the installation. You're all finished. And so now the only thing is to wait uh, while this gathers information about vCenter and then run a report. Thank you.